So good morning, everyone. I'm so excited. I know I'm a broken record, but so excited that today I have Mara Malloy, who is an actor, a writer, a teacher, all the things in that creative space, and not just an actor, a writer, a teacher, but also co-writer, -co co-producer, co-star. And you do these things regionally in New York City and Chicago, and you're kind of my first like artist that I've gotten to talk to and I'm very excited about this process for you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. I, I love it. <laughs> and so Mara and I know each other because I, I I used to work with her husband, I feel like a lifetime ago um, in the Indianapolis tech scene because that's how people meet each other. And so Mara and I stayed in touch and through kids and all those things. Now through COVID, we finally get to have a cup of coffee. I know. I think the last time was that tease me. Probably. Oh, I love tease me. Love tease me. Yeah. So good. So tell us, tell us what you do. Like, what would you say? I mean, that's a actor, writer, producer. That's not a day-to-day -day thing though. So no, tell us. Yeah, it kind of hops around as the jobs come up. And like you said, I have a five-year-old and I have been the primary caretaker for the last five years. So a lot of times the work is around her schedule. Yeah. Um, she recently started going back to preschool. I kind of kept her home the first semester and like, and kept tabs on the preschools. And then I was like, and now go for it. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with these 21 hours. So no, I mean, I do know what to do. I have a lot I have to do. So, um, yeah, like I've I've taught at the college level. I've taught for IRT. They they have a young playwright series. Uh, I did that last fall. So I love to teach, and sometimes it's acting, and sometimes it's writing. And once it was like theater history, and that really kept me on my toes. And then um, when I was in New York, I kind of shifted gears out of acting, and I never thought I was going to act again. And I started writing exclusively and I was like writing like a mad woman yeah and so again I write around my daughter so like it's 10 a.m and I've been up since five so this is like lunch for me so I get up at five <laughs> <laughs> like where's my sandwich and <laughs> so I write before the household wakes up um because I don't really know what the day will bring and I can easily be distracted and I really need quiet. And uh, that's personally what I need to be able to write. Yes. So right now, and then and then a couple years ago, I did, I got another acting job and I've been in a couple plays, which really um, surprised me. And I, I welcomed with open arms. So I did a show with the Irish Theater of Chicago. And then I remember I did that with I love them they're they're fantastic there's nothing like Chicago actors they are just amazing and then I did a show with Summit Performance here in Indianapolis and I'm a big fan of that theater company and it was a wonderful experience and um and so right now I am a writer for hire on one project I think there's a rewrite coming up they're sorting that out this week and <laughs> back to me with when I can sign something. Um, but I'm when you say writer for hot, when you say writer for hire though, for those that don't know, so this is a pilot for a TV show, correct? Right. Someone had an idea for a TV show, somehow found my manager. I have a manager out in LA and, um, you know, picked me to develop a pilot and yeah. a TV and so I worked on that last year and then I think there's like a rewrite that's in happening and then he tries to sell it after you know I hand over the goods and then um but then the other thing is I've started writing for Indie Maven um here in Indianapolis Leslie we're a big fan of Indie Maven me too and yeah um, I just love Leslie and so that's been wonderful to start writing in a different form because I've been doing mostly screenplays or TV series, I've been, it's a very different format. And um, and then five years ago, I did a TEDx talk about my path to minimalism. And I have started trying to tackle a book in response to that and how minimalism has evolved for me in the last five years. And I'm kind of starting to focus more, not so much on 
how to be organized and tidy because I think there's plenty of people in the space right. that are nailing that and are much better at it than me, but I'm really interested in, in why I personally need to and how it's tied to anxiety and recovery and um, control issues or lack of control as it may be. And love that. I will say I was there in the audience for that. I remember I was so yeah, I was I was there. It was so good. I remember there was threads going around talking about let's get rid of everything. <laughs> it was it was really cathartic. It was really, really lovely. But so there's a lot of different threads that I kind of want to pull on in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like me. Mm. No, I love it. Um <laughs> so usually I talk about, you know, ask the question, you know, how do you get here? But I I kind of want to, I kind of want to skip that a little bit. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's interesting. How do you become a yeah. screenplay? It, you're interesting. It's interesting. But what I'm interested in the most is the writing. So for someone like me, I get overwhelmed looking at a blank page. I mm -hmm. love a good notebook. I love, I have more, my husband would kill me. I have more notebooks in drawers that have never been opened and I love them. Mm -hmm. But the moment I see a blank page, I panic. I'm like, yeah. one, what if somebody reads this? <laughs> two, two, what if they read it and think I'm crazy? And then three, what if I'm actually crazy? So I get very nervous <laughs> with that page. What do you tell people? What's and and not and, and I get this is a very snackable conversation, but you know, what is your process of just sitting down because that's discipline. You're like, I get up at five and I write. And when between naps, I write and I do this. I mean, how do you get from the chaos here to a focus on a page? What is that process for you? Well, I don't, I like we, we moved at the end of the year and I did not write for a couple months. Yeah. So I was too, I was either on Zillow or I was packing boxes and, it, and I couldn't. Um, but, but that's why I get up at five because yeah. I, I am easily distracted and I am a people pleaser and I, you know, am, a, um, I, I was brought up in the patriarchy and I will serve my family or my puppy or, you know, or, 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 yeah. or I will let them all be excuses not to write. So, so I had to just, I have to get like really honest with myself and I also, um, I carry around in my heart that I don't think I'm the only mom writer out there who's waking up really early to get it done because we are, there is so much to do in a day. Yeah. Um, I did uh, get pregnant and told all my producers this, nothing, nothing will get in the way. This isn't going to stop me from anything that needs to be done. And it didn't, but to think that I was just going to, work around her schedule and write when she sleeps and it was just going to be easy is just yeah. BS. It was, it, it was uh, a really humbling um, realization that my idea of a stay at home mom was a lot easier than what I thought it would be. Right. Um, yeah. So a blank page terrifies me too. And um, every time I feel like I'm starting all over, um, sometimes I'll use a timer, you know, like if it just, uh, if I, if I'm really out of practice, I do think it's like exercising. Yeah. Like, so if, if I haven't, if I haven't done it religiously for a while, like I'm really out of practice, I find that when I have to rewrite something, I can sit for hours, but when it's a blank page, like one hour can leave me exhausted. And so I think there's just, um, there's different energy needed for different stages. Yeah. And I think uh, I really try, try, try to give myself the grace to make yeah. the first draft awful. And I have a lot of faith in like my abilities to rewrite because I've seen it over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did that so, so let's go back to that first question that I skipped over with that. So how did you get to the point where you're like, I want to, I want to write. I want to act. I want to do all those things. How did you get basically from that blank page when you were younger to now? Well, I, my mom was a creative writing and a she is, she's a retired creative writing and English teacher. So I was just 
uh, and, and English and writing was really easy for me in school um, compared to like physics or math or whatever, or science. And, um, but then I just really wanted to be an actress since I was like a little girl and I got my master's in fine arts and acting and I moved to New York and I was pursuing that. And um, so how did I get into writing? I think I, I had- Or produced, acting, you know, all the, like how you- I just, I had to try. Yeah. And I kept trying and I, I would reach like, I would take a couple steps up the ladder. Like I got my equity card doing a show up in Vermont one summer. And then a, some friends and I put on a show at the New York Fringe Festival that was like really well received for off, off, off Broadway. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like we got mentioned in the times and we got extended and like some Broadway producers had took a meeting with us. It was so exciting. And I'm really proud of that show and it ended and it was the first time I'd ever been in a play where it ended and I was like broken hearted. Yeah. And I think I was looking for something to create that wouldn't end the day the show ended that could, I don't know. And I think with writing, I, it was so on the DL. I, I, I worked as a, at a law firm from four to 12 every night and I would wake up in the morning and I would just write and then go walk around Prospect Park in Brooklyn and then take a shower and go to work. And there wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot of auditions. I wasn't, yeah. I was kind of really, I, I was at like a crossroads. Like this is what I'd been worked for. I'd, I'd gone to school for it and I didn't know how I was gonna make a career out of it. Yeah. And I, but I knew I had to stay creative. So I was like, well, maybe I could get a nine to five and I can try to see if like writing would just like do that. But with writing, I don't have to pay for acting classes, pay for headshots, um, beg people just to let me do it. Like I can just roll out of bed and I can just do it. And, and that's what I did. And I had this idea for a screenplay and I, I, I followed I, I wrote it. It, it, it was ten years of my life. I think I had seventeen rewrites by twenty nineteen, and stars were attached, and production companies were attached, and then someone would die. Someone would get attached to a new movie and leave, and we would start from scratch. And it was just like this roller coaster. Yeah. And it, um, it taught me how to write, and it did not get me. Well, so I want to pull on that because I do know some of this story, but um, I think it's such an, I think it's such an interesting story and ties to, um, you know, kind of ties to where you're, what you're working on next mm -hmm. is talk about some of that, you know, some of that struggle. We're going to tie those to that struggle and delight question with the struggle of this project to where you're going with, you know, uh, with the next one. Right. So I think the struggle is that I, I learned how to write and I learned how to really fail. And I also, and the other things that I learned along the way are, are tied to my response to that TED talk and that um, I think I put my, I know I put like all of my self-worth into that screenplay. Yeah. So when it ended, like, so did my self-worth. And yeah. I was a mother to an infant where anime was like a toddler at that point. Yeah. And, and I, or, I don't know, it was, it was just, it was like a really low point for me. And I had to kind of come out of it. And, yeah. and, and then I had to start writing again, yeah. um, which I, I, actually, I actually think this job that I got last year helped me kind of like, you know, pick myself up and start creating again, because honestly, like I wrote a ton when I was in Brooklyn, but then um, after Anna Mae was born, it, it was so hard to write that I really would only do it when I had a rewrite due. So yeah. I wasn't creating new content. And now I'm at this point in motherhood and in her life where she is knock on wood, like about to be in school full-time next year in kindergarten, hopefully in person and um, and I'm gonna have like 
I'm going to have my days to write again. And yeah. so now I feel like they're starting to be ideas in a way that there weren't when I was in early motherhood. Now you and I have talked about briefly. And so for, for the record, for those wondering what happened to her 10 years, it wasn't due to a great fucking project. It was, you lost the rights to the book that you were working on. Yeah. yeah. yeah which is crushing. And so, but you're taking that and you, you are talking about, and this is one of my favorite topics, which sounds weird, but, um, and you're talking about failure. And I have done a talk um, publicly about failure, not to the extent of writing. Um, oh, it was a long time ago. It was uh, for ladies in SAS and um, I cried like the whole time, um, but, like, but I think it's important. And I think I've said this on another one of these conversations, coffee conversations, as well as, as women don't talk about failure. And again, that's back to that patriarchy as well, is that we need to have this, you know, we don't talk about the bad until we've reached the pinnacle in the end, right. we really talk about it where I want to talk about being in the mud together and like, shit's hard and not everything works. And, you know, I mentioned to you before we started recording, you know, I changed my LinkedIn this week that it no longer says founder because it didn't, it didn't found. <laughs> like it, I didn't raise money and the money ran out. And um, if I were an average white man, I would keep founder on there, <laughs> because, but I'm not. And it didn't feel authentic to me because it didn't, it didn't hit that high. And yeah. I think women, we don't talk about that journey. And so um, that's kind of a roundabout way of just saying very, very interested um, and passionate about this project that, you know, that you're starting to dive into. Can you talk about it just a little bit? Yeah, well, um, I think when I did my TED Talk, I, well, I was invited to do my TED Talk because I was kind of blogging about minimalism here in Indianapolis and um, so they wanted to know my path to minimalism. And at that point, I wasn't really, uh, I, you know, you see it differently the older you get. So yeah. I wasn't connecting it to all of my uh, challenges. Yeah. And I didn't see how connected it was to like my early years of sobriety. So I've been sober for a while and I do think like this, the work I was doing in those early years kind of manifested in me wanting like a simpler bedroom and, um, and just like really decluttering from the outside in and the inside out. And since then I became a mom, I went through postpartum depression. I went through this really big failure and I still had to wake up and be anime's mom every morning. And so I feel like I'm, I'm not happy it failed because I, I love the project and I believed in it, but um, I do think I embrace making mistakes. Yeah. And I think it's made me a better mom. So I think yeah. that, you know, as a mother, um, I see these lessons that I'm learning about myself. Uh, I, I see them through the lessons that I'm trying to teach her. And yeah. so I think motherhood and and simple living and um, uh, privilege, you know, like my daughter was born in 2015, the 2016 election, me like many privileged white liberal ladies was in shock and I had to like come to terms with that. And I think that's wrapped up in the screenplay I was working on because it was about a woman who was passing a black woman who was passing as a white woman. And I feel like I just learned so many lessons in the last five years since that talk that all are connected. Um, but right now it feels really messy. I'm so early on. It's like, it's all over the place. Well, we're going to come back. Answer. <laughs> well, no, when, when the book comes, I said, just give a snip. So, uh, you know, when the book or whatever you do next comes out, then we'll have another conversation. <laughs> we'll talk all about it. So um, wrapping up a little bit. So the big question, obviously, of, of the day, of the day, of the morning, um, you know, how are you leaving, it's a legacy question, how are you leaving your trace on our community? Yeah, I don't know. I hope that there's just a lot more writing to come that I can share. 
Um, I think a lot of, I think that's what else is new is that my writing was so not really public. So I think yeah. like, like, continuing to find outlets where I can just like share and be like as honest as possible about where I'm at and hopefully people will read it and connect. I, I love that. I mean, my, my favorite thing about you and your journey is the honesty of, you know, from each point, it's just really lovely. And I'm really thankful for you having coffee with me this morning. Me too. I got an extra cup. I'm going to be like, <laughs> I'm <amped today. laughs> yeah. Well, you have a wonderful afternoon. You too, Jillian. You take care.